When writing an academic essay, one of the assignments I'll ask you to complete is a research matrix. Now, depending on the type of essay that you're writing, uh, will determine which of the examples that I'm sharing here will most apply. For those of you who are writing a five-paragraph essay, which is what we'll be talking about here today, we'll primarily be looking at this example that I've highlighted here. So when creating a research matrix, essentially we are assuring that we have support, we have evidence, we have citations that we know go into each of our body paragraphs. Remember that a topic sentence will begin a body paragraph. So what I would suggest in completing this research matrix is to include your topic sentence in the form of a complete declarative sentence. That is, it has a subject and a predicate. It's a complete sentence. And you can insert your topic sentence here. Now, if you need to, you can expand this first column a little bit so that more of the sentence applies maybe on, on, on the first line. But regardless of the length, well, I would suggest that you copy and paste the complete topic sentence for each of your body paragraphs in column A. So we, again, we have a topic sentence number one, two, and three. Again, these will be the first sentences of each of your body paragraphs. Now, what I would include here is a reference, or maybe a better term would be a citation. So an example might read something like the author's last name and then the year of the article. I would begin making sure that you have primary research articles to support your topic sentences. And here you can simply list the citations that are going to refer to each of your topic sentences. Now, for the purposes of our five-paragraph essay, I'm going to ask that you include at least one citation in each of your body paragraphs. You will need to also include at least one citation in the reference paragraph. Overall, you need to include at least five citations. Okay, so most likely one of your body paragraphs will have more than one citation. Okay, so again, a minimum of five citations overall making sure we have at least one citation in each of the, the paragraphs, in the introduction paragraph and each of the body paragraphs. The conclusion paragraph, which we'll talk about later, will not include or should not include a citation. So here, if you have more than one, uh, one citation, then you can include that here in a second column and so on, depending on the number of citations for each of your topic sentences. Okay, so this will be part of uh, the assignment to complete this research matrix. Again, making sure we have our topic sentences here. The introduction, you can either leave it here, or if you want to include the thesis statement as a complete sentence, that's also that's up to you. But here, the idea is that you're including a citation for your introduction and at least one citation in each of your body paragraphs. Again, this is something that should come from your outline. So you should already have this depending on you know, where you are in your process. At the time of this recording, we have completed two weeks. So all of us should have references or support or evidence for each of our body paragraphs. And uh, you know, if we don't have one, we should have also a support for the introduction. Um, but this is primarily for the topic sentences and and um, once you have your introduction, you've developed your body paragraph, and you have developed your, the problem within the introduction paragraph, then we'll need to find at least one reference to include in there. Uh, a paraphrase. All of our ideas should be paraphrased, but for the purposes of this research matrix, I'm not asking you to include those ideas, only the citations. Okay, This is, again, just to assure that we have support for each of our uh, so each of our body paragraphs, and preferably you have done this or completed this before you begin writing your first draft. Now, the second aspect of this assignment will include, um, include uh, the actual reference according to APA. So if you need examples for APA, what I typically do is just type, do a search for articles, APA 7th edition. Always make sure that you're 
looking at examples online for APA 7th edition, since there was a slight change between the 6th and 7th edition. And usually one of the first uh, results here are going to give us some good uh, examples. Okay, so in this particular result, we have an example of a journal article with a DOI and one without a DOI. You might find some without a DOI, but, it's coming, but they're coming from a well-known database. Okay, in that case, you will not need a URL. There are many other types of references, but since we are requiring at least three journal articles of this type, this will uh, provide good examples for those types of articles, for those types of references. If you have some examples for, for example, a book or book chapter, or proceedings, then that will require a slightly different format. Again, I would either look online. I've also included a link of a presentation and I've included some of the top eight or eight to ten types of references that you're likely to, to need for most of your academic writing. So you can also refer to that. And um, of course, you can ask uh, questions. We can look at it in class if you need further clarification. All right, so this will be our assignment for our um, research matrix, making sure that we upload this to the virtual classroom. Uh, I would just copy and paste what you have into the text box when you're submitting this for, uh, for an assignment.